Here we Hello everybody, welcome back to Two Tubas and a Canadian. I'm Tuba One, Marcelo Diaz. I'm Tuba One, Owen Clifford. He's not Tuba One. I'm the Canadian. He's the Canadian. Introduce yourself, guest. I am guess. Mr. Smith, also known as Michael Smith. Michael oh. Smith. Michael Can Smith. we call you Mike? Yeah, for the podcast, totally fine. Have a big Mike. Yeah, just Mike. What about skinny Mike? Feels better. If you want. Skinny Little Mike? Mike. <laughs> I like skinny Mike. I would say Mike or Skinny Mike. Skinny what about Mike, Mike and Ike? Oh. Well, that's the candy. Well, yeah, but we're naming after you. We're naming you after the candy because we're just so sweet. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. He prepared Ooh. that metaphor. He did. I he like did. it. He spent all I've night had night that night one. Night. Yeah. As I like to say, well played. <laughs> Extremely well played. You're the only person that says that. So, Mike and Ike. Yes. Please tell us about your relationship with Zachary Deerwater. We are very curious. So Zachary Deerwater, yeah, him. I started here one or two years before him, oh. and I never met him in my life. He and I, he actually started at the middle school. Oh, really? Oh. I started here right out of college. This was going back to 2005, so quite a while ago. Long story short, about two years after I started, he came up here and just met him through being in the phys ed department and. We, I, I enjoyed his more laid back demeanor since he's not from New Jersey. He's from Where's Kentucky. He from? Oh, Kentucky. Yeah. Right. So, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 Right. So, uh, but I, I like that. He was kind of, I could tell he was a good guy, good heart, good, just person. And we kind of struck up a friendship over the first year or two just working together. And then now, we've, even if I didn't work here anymore, he and I would still be very good friends. So, That's so I met your, him here. Yeah. he's your best friend, you would say? I would say he's in, he's definitely in the top three. Oh, yeah. wow. Like, how would you, like, exact placing? <laughs> exact placing? <laughs> that I... 27. I, it'd be hard to do. It'd be hard to. It, you know, because it depends on what you're doing. Like, if we were going to go get lunch, it might be Mr. Deerwater. If we were gonna go do a Spartan race, which is an obstacle race in the mountains, it might be, it'd be Mr. Deerwater. It might be like someone else. Like, that's true, that's true. My mm. dad did Spartan. Are you French with any of the, Are you like good French with any of the other teachers here? Uh, Miss Pacheco, actually, I'm very good friends with. Who's uh, Miss Pacheco? Uh, I don't know she that. is a phys ed teacher, kind of hair like mine in a way, uh, but more like the comb over. Type oh, right, right, right. I know you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, she yes, teaches okay. more in the morning, morning hours. Um, but I would say Miss Pacheco, Miss Lavorn, who ironically is one of my wife's good friends. So in some ways, I met my wife because Miss Lavorn was friends with her, and Miss Pacheco and some of Miss Lavorn's other friends were at. Either a baby or bridal shower, you know, one of those things older people do. Uh, right. So I would say Miss Lavorn, Miss Pacheco, Mr. Deerwater. I mean, I'm, I'm on good terms with everyone in our department. Right. We have, I think, 13 phys ed teachers. I don't think anybody hates you. Yeah. You're so no. lovable, Mr. Smith. Yeah, Thank you. You are the most yeah. likable gym teacher. Um, I appreciate that. But yeah, and it, it's interesting. I don't act passive, I just be myself. And I don't need people to like me. I'm not like a people pleaser. Yeah, be, uh, be haters gonna hate. But I think because of that, people, I guess, like me. Or right. think I'm at least, at the very least, like a good person. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mr. Deerwater, Ms. Pacheco, Ms. Lavorn, uh, we're all pretty close. Huh. Like, I, like I would say outside of here. I was right. actually speaking nice. to Mr. Deerwater about you. About me? In the hall, I saw him. Today? Mm. It was you were there. I, you were there too. Oh yeah. And yeah. What was it? Period three or two or uh, something. I was You're going talking about me to, behind my back. I was going to lunch. Well, Mr. Deerwater was. I I what? said they they're saying yeah, Mr. Deerwater, Mr. Smith. I haven't yeah. seen you in a while. And I said, well, yeah, well, I, I remember I said I hadn't seen. And him I was in a while. actually out. And sick. now we're doing a podcast together. <laughs> I know. How the yeah. tables That's have so crazy. turned. That's so crazy. It really was, like comes full uh, circle. Comes, yeah, exactly. The, whole, the circle of life. And I said, one of us will die at this table. Okay. And I said, possibly. I really and hope it's Leo. I said, um, well, actually, I was out for a week sick. And yeah, Mr. Deer was I like, remember. oh, well, it must have been Marcelo. You're just taking a look at him. He must have gotten you sick. Damn. And I said, well, actually, that would be confusing since Marcelo got sick. 
No, you got sick first. I, I and know. I, and you got me sick. I got you sick. When you, did we hang out? Like, always. Not when I was This sick. is not important who got her sick. <laughs> we have a guest here that is spending his anyway, valuable time I'm with us. Saying. I'm this enjoying guest, the he's pretty sick. banter. He's pretty sick. He's the banterer. He banters about everything. Well, you he's, know what we can say? We're all pretty sick with what we do in life. Ha. What does that even... I don't think I get that That's one. True. You don't get it? I don't get it. Cause it's like, like sick, if you're like, really good at something, you could say... That's sick. Let's say you're really good at nope. shooting three-pointers in basketball. You'd be like, oh, you're sick at shooting three-pointers. That's right. That's right. I get it now. I'm very big into metaphors and wordplay. He gets it. I've, I've gone that. I've, I, I've, I, yeah. What's your favorite wordplay? <laughs> My favorite wordplay? That's I almost too broad play. to answer. Like Coldplay your favorite sucks, metaphor. Yeah. My favorite like metaphor. old, what's his name? What's an old brain. Chinese uh, wise well, man? Well, there, there's different fables and quotes and stuff I like. Yes. One of my favorite ones I read in the book when I was probably about 19 years old. Uh, voluntarily, I started reading as a junior in high school. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I've heard that before. Right, right. right. And I, you know, I, I do a lot of that kind of stuff in my health classes, stuff like that. But yeah. That always stuck with me because who you spend the most time with, sometimes it's a mix of friends and family, sometimes more friends or whatever. But that's why, like when you're young, like you guys, your home life's important. And if you have like a challenging home life, which like me growing up at times, my home life wasn't the best. Um, But I always had outlets like sports and, you know, just, you know, doing whatever. it is true. You start assimilating without even realizing it. You probably even notice. You three probably yeah, start saying assimilate. the same words. I tr- try oh, my absolutely. best not to be anything like them. <laughs> but well, absolutely. Wow. I thought off. I thought we were friends, Owen. I absolutely. After we off. partook in porch well, culture could, together, it, it could be a love hate. We have to have more porch culture. <laughs> we need to bring porch culture Are you a fan to of Bloomfield. I have porch known culture. You so what is porch? Culture? Much less time. So like, a bunch of like and people so just sit on their porches. Yeah. Yeah, so I actually do, my mom, my mom actually was a big porch person. Really? We always just lived in apartments, but she always would try and rent an apartment where we'd be maybe the first floor of two or three family, and she loved sitting on the porch at the end of the day, and you know, just relaxing, talking to neighbors, very social. So if porch culture is a community kind of street hanging out, I I am a fan of that. I feel like it builds a a nice community, really. I think it's crazy how none of that exists in this town. And then you go... It does right over the border. But if you go right over the border to where Nork is, Mm -hmm. it's right there. Like right on those. I but there, there's many blocks. parts of the south end of Bloomfield by North I disagree. that have the porch culture. Yeah. I haven't seen that much of it. I disagree because uh, I guess it's more Glen Ridge, but like when you if you take walks, you live a, literally a block away from Glen Ridge. My block is Glen Ridge. Half of my block. Well, is this Glen whole Ridge. area, northern New Jersey, it's crazy. You could go two blocks this way, and it could be totally yeah. different than two blocks that way. Yeah. My my street, it's it's more town like and mm-hmm. but literally my block. If you go, my house is on the Bloomfield side. You walk halfway. Yeah, some gas street to lantern, half and half. It turns to yeah. It's on my street, uh-huh. and that's usually where we would take walks. Me yeah, or with yeah, my yeah. family. Total porch culture. Like so many people out there. Well, it's Glen Ridge. This, this is Bloomfield specifically. Know, like, Glen Ridge porch culture is not real porch culture. It that's is. a There's take, hot take of mine. You only learned about this yesterday. I've known about post culture my whole life. I explained it to I you part, yesterday. Well, he, he didn't see, know. His hot take is in, I don't <laughs> disagree with it. There are certain porch cultures that can be very disingenuous. Exactly. They're like sitting on the porch like, oh, I... Or they just like wave yeah. and... It's not the same though. There's no there are actual certain discourse. streets. Like the one thing, like growing up, say, with me and my mom and not having, say, like really much money and stuff like that. There is more of a authenticity. There's like a bond. With the porch culture yeah. of neighborhoods I grew up in. But then if you're, if people are walking by million dollar houses, it's a, it is a little more fake most of the time. Yeah, it's like. Not that the people are bad people. Well, yeah. But it's it's more of like that cliche, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, country club kind of. Yeah, I think. Vibe. I think they, they, we should like 
make an effort to bring porch culture to this town. It just, like you were saying, it yeah. creates it more starts like with one. a bond yeah. around the neighborhood. So, well, you know what happened? My mom would sit outside, and then people would start seeing, and they'd walk by. Yeah. And then my mom yeah, was very conscious. personable, and you know, it's then at the end of even on Tuesday, they would come over and have a drink together or That's something. What I was say. Yeah, I would say my a parents, social. Thing. I would go on a walk with my parents. And we would see someone that they know uh-huh. walking down the street or sitting at their porch. Walking next their thing dog. you know, yeah. next thing you know, later that night they're over having drinks. Uh-huh. In a real, in a real porch culture community, they're like focused on making the bonds and friendships. But while in like a Glen Ridge X porch culture community, they're worried about who has like whose job gives them better. Keeping up with more about appearances. Keep, keeping up yeah. with the Joneses. You know, have you yeah. ever heard that term? Yeah, yeah. Yes, or a phrase. Um, so here's what I would say. Let's say about towns like Glen Ridge. Like, Glen Ridge is very small. So I would say 70-ish percent of Glen Ridge is what you're saying. And then there is the other 30 percent that is more, like Leo's saying, that's more authentic porch culture. Where Bloomfield, the interesting thing, is such a dynamic town. Like, the south end versus the middle, which is here, and the north end are, like, different worlds. Well, Bloomfield is, like... The most of the residential areas are right by like the borders of the town. <laughs> yeah. So the, the people who live there are influenced I mean, a lot Ranch, by the town that's yeah. right by them. Like my neighbor, I, so I live also by Glen Ridge. Right next to Glen Ridge. My neighbors who are you know further up the hill from me act like you know your normal Glen Ridge kid. Yeah. But it's it's weird. Like it's if environment. I, if I yeah. go like fifteen blocks away. Completely different people. Uh huh. And there's, I always say, as I get older, I realize there's pros and cons to everything. If you grow up in, I don't know if you ever heard of a town called Chatham, it's like typical, it's like Glen Ridge on steroids. You know, like it's Morris County, kind of like white suburbia kind of thing, where there's great things about it. But then there's but like like things bland. about it that is very, yeah, you, bland is a good word. And even like the word I've just used is like, it's kind of boring mm. right, to me. Um, now, there's no perfect scenario, but even if you look for a house or where you want to settle down or live, mm-hmm. I like, frankly, kind of a mix of it because everyone keeps oh. each other honest. So, right. do you live here in Bloomfield, or do you live... So, right now, I live in Montclair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a fake porch culture town. <laughs> so, Montclair <laughs> is... You know what's interesting? Montclair... Now, we're going to buy a house in about six months. Where? Um, I, I would say anywhere between, from Bloomfield up through, like, the Wayne or the Caldwells, Verona... And the more, like, I've really, we've taken our time. I have clients and people I know who are real estate agents and, like, good people that will be honest with you. (laughs) And more and more parts of Bloomfield, Verona, uh, the Caldwells, part of why we'd want to move is they're very good family community yeah. where they have community things they, uh, Verona Park has events Brookdale Park in the north end here mm. has events but every um, Friday I think it is they have a concert yeah, in the summer in the summer they have the fireworks and stuff but um, Mon- Montclair is an interesting thing so Montclair just as much as Bloomfield you can go two blocks one way and it is like a completely different world and there's parts of Montclair from living there for the last five years that I really like and there's parts that I don't like like people in Montclair from my experience tend to be like too extreme like one way or the other like and I am talking about political even though they are very political I'm talking about like they're like here on something and then here and then like oh it's just you know, that kind of extremism, I see too much. Like, if you live in a town, it's exhausting. Yeah, mm. way too much. Right. Now, Montclair has amazing restaurants, great food, Very true. good parks. Like, they have a lot of good community stuff. Some, like, old school retro stuff, like the Clarish Theater, up the lab, stuff like that. Um, but there's a reason why we're not going to even, like, look for a house in Montclair. It's just like two kind of 
extreme in a way. Would you consider Bluefield? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so, and because we're not, you know, some people are looking for a house and they like want to live in one town or even two towns. We're not like that. We're pretty open ended. Whether it was one of the three Caldwells, Verona, Bloomfield, uh, Cedar Grove, um, Roseland, Wayne, stuff like Fairfield, stuff like that. But everything within, I would say, from right where Bluefield High School is, anywhere within like 15, 20 minutes later. Okay. Because they all are and seem like, and I know people in all those towns, like very good, like family towns. And some of the people in those towns lived in Bluefield or Montclair or Glen Ridge. So they like know the vibe we're talking about. Now, we've heard you, you have a child. Yes. Is she kidding? little Mike? No, his name's Caden. Caden. C C A D E N. Why did you choose that name? E-N. So, kind of like the house thing where we're not married to one town or two. Names, I wasn't going to, we weren't going to make him uh, a junior of me. So, the more we looked at names, and then we actually didn't name him until he was two days old. We kind of let it really marinate. You you look at him, and it's weird. You start getting a vibe. And for whatever reason, a lot of C names we really liked. We're thinking of... Caden, Cole, you know, Cooper, uh, this not C name, Connor, but Brandon. Did you, Connor, ever, never did you ever consider Quantavius? No, but that is powerful. How about Key or So, you know what? If, what about the name Balconia? You know what name I really like? What? One of my favorite movies of all time. What? Al Pacino. <laughs> good, good guess, but Maximus. Oh, Maximus. Actually, funny from, story. From Gladiator. That was supposed to be my you name that originally. Movie? You like, were really? supposed to be Maximus? Like, that was one of the names because my dad really loves that movie. I can never imagine. So, they, so your dad Maximus. loves Gladiator. Yeah, he loves Gladiator. It's, it, it's top two Dude, or three movies. Imagine, imagine so, saying, like, oh, mom, I'm going to go hang out with Maximus. Marcello and Maximus. It's, like, powerful. Right? It is. It's, it's, it's almost That's like... Cool. But Maximus... <laughs> but it's not... Only. It's unfitting. It's but, like, yeah, but, not, I'm going to go hang out with this Roman Gladiator. But that's Brooked exactly Park. Maximus is like actually the real name. name of, a, of yeah. the most famous Roman warrior. Max, his real name is, or full name, Maximus Aurelius Decimus. That is too many syllables. Oh, wow. well, yeah. So that's obviously it wasn't like serious, but I kind of was. Um, <laughs> but, you know, after he was born and like we looked at him and let it marinate, day two we were kind of like Caden. That sounds, it's like I, soft yet powerful. And you gotta, fa- what I always say with names, you gotta factor in the last name. Yeah, so that's Smith, very true. Yeah. Smith is very generic and vanilla. So you could. John. You get kind of crazy. John, well, you should, no John Smith. But what K- is your but, transfixion on John Smith? But we felt like Caden Smith was good. Keep talking about it. That's cool, that's cool. But, no. What's the story behind your name? Do you know? Yes. So my mom said that uh, it was between Michael and Mark. Okay. And she knew Mike or Michael Smith would be very generic, but she just loved the name Michael. And I was born in 1981. So at that time, a lot of traditional names were popular, like Michael, John, Mark, Joe, Joseph, whatever. James. Yeah. Jim. Yeah, exactly. Tom. Uh, you're good with names. Yes. Jamal. He's so, a name savant. Exactly. Is that another one of your workplace? Maybe. We got I hate Coldplay. Savant <laughs> would be a good savant. name. Savant. Savant Smith. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Maybe I'll keep that in the memory bank. Yeah, yeah. Rename your child. <laughs> <laughs> if you have another kid. Middle have another name. Kid. Yes. Savant. What about you, Liam? Well, my, my son's middle Savant name is my name. Yeah. Right. No, I so, was going to say, what the story behind what, what, like, you? Well, you want to hear a fun fact. My father's name is Leo. Uh, really? Yes. Yeah, Leo Smith. Leo Smith. Yeah. Yep. Smith. So what's what's your let's go around the table. What's your uh, word? Uh, we'll go around. I think it was well my I know my I know the, I definitely know the first my middle name. Which is actually Joseph. It's Joseph. Usually it's, a middle name is either is a parent, a grandparent, it, or something like it's that. Named after my dad's dad. Yeah. Um, your grandfather. Joseph Vasilenko. My my la, yeah. My last name is Vasilenko. It 
and that was a really big thing my dad's side of the family because there were no boys like out of my my dad's mom had many kids and they all had girls i was one of the i was the only boy at the time that was born that was and, a big deal yeah and huh. and and uncle joe that's what i call him uh, uncle joe he passed away um <laughs> um it does but, um uncle joe he he really wanted the boy to be Vasilenko, so I'm, I was Joseph Vasilenko for him. So I have his full name in my name. So what about your first name, though? Do you know? I don't You're just know. Leo? I don't know. I know. It'd be interesting to ask your parents I today. I think my name, if I was... I think if they just liked it, or was there a yes, meeting? I'm not sure. I, I do know that if I was a girl, I was going to be called... Um, what was it? Oh, it just fell off. Lana? No. <laughs> no. It was, um. I think it was, uh. I can't think of it. I'll, I'll think of it. Leoa? No. <laughs> well, Leonidas? some people do make. Well, Leonidas from 300. <laughs> people you do know, make boy warriors. names with the female ending if they have a girl. Yeah. Yeah, with the I and I've heard of that, yeah. Leonardo. I, I remember um, Leonard uh, Cassidy, it, over I summer think. camp um, when I was Cassidy Joseph kindergarten I think <laughs> the director her name was Marcella uh, yes <laughs> there's a it teacher was, it was here strange I think one of the teachers here <laughs> I think her name is Marcella Mar- or Marcella Marcella huh that's it was weird. probably it an Italian Cassidy. thing like yeah Marcella or Marcella Italian. is an Italian that was it. What? Cassidy. Cassidy? I, so they can call me Cassidy. Cassidy's a Cassidy. nice Cassidy. name, actually. Yeah. That could work. That's, That's like unisex, I think. Yeah. Cassidy Joseph. Cassidy oh, Joseph Vasilenko. There's a rapper in the 90s named Cassidy. You know, There's no, a no, lot of rappers in the 90s that had a very, For very reason, outlandish name. Well, now all the rappers start still with have L-I-L. <laughs> yeah, Lil. Every like Lil fill in the blank. Oh, um, Lil. Speaking of rappers, apparently, Drake. Yes. Oh boy! Is going on trial. Oh, for, for the, grooming? No, for a murder. <laughs> what? For a murder? What? Okay. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, are you familiar with the rapper? Um, I'm forgetting his name. Oh my god. The baby? No, not the baby. Um, <laughs> Lil Durk? No, it's the guy that you listen to all the time. Um, not, not Juice Wrld. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh my god. Did the rapper pass away. Yeah, he died. Oh, XXX and Tattoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. do not listen to XXX and <laughs> Okay, whatever. Because when you said Juice World, it made me think. Yeah, yeah. Drake uh, his... supposedly <laughs> murdered him? Apparently. No. I thought it was some guy this like was outside like of like a... 2019. Yeah, it was outside of a, a, a dealership. Yeah. I don't know. That's like what I heard. Shot in his eye. Murdered heard, him man. physically or like with... He got someone shot maybe? in front of his eye, in front of his car. How would Drake... Yeah, he was like leaving a <laughs> dealership and got shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're Canadian. We can't do that. Canadian, Canadians, Canadians can't, can't do that. Kill. No, Drake is the type of guy to be, the type of guy to be like, why I order? <laughs> like choke him out. No, it was a gun. Put up your fist the cuffs. No, he was shot. XX X X ten ten was shot. He was shot. Whatever his name is. What if Drake shot him? I can't see Drake doing that. Well, not Drake, but one of his boys. Like a higher gun, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Like a hitman. Yeah. Well then, why Drake? He got being... Playboy we have a very important killer. question that we'd like to ask all of our guests. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. What color do you hate? Oh. What color do I hate? Yeah. yeah. And we have a follow-up question. Which we ask every teacher that we interview. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's not specifically for I you. would say... Because it's a good question, because usually you think about what you like. Right. right. So what do I hate? <laughs> People. I would say... I would say the medium shade of green. I like forest green. I like light green like that. But there's like that... Middle green like shade. Like that on I'm your bottle, would you fan. say? On your the, bottle. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan. What? Of this that's, a, that's a classic color. The the ugliest color, the the color that was voted the ugliest color, mm. is a shade of green. It's like a greenish kind of brown it? color. It's like um. So I know that it's, color. It's kind of like the color of the this pulse, carpet. Just the color of this carpet is greener. It's darker. Yeah. I and say a little bit darker. I say the worst color is probably like a, a yellowish brown. Yeah. I don't. I don't disagree. You know why I didn't pick. 
uh, an earth color, yellowish brown, because it's an earth color, yellowish brown, it's more neutral. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say like maybe a slightly darker version of this. Of just green? But I do like That's the dark That's like a very basic green. green. I know. I'm just not a fan. Yeah. Huh. It's very like stale. I would say that's an earth color, though. Well, yeah, I'm, but very I, much. An I, earth I'm color. quite fond of that. Shade but there, of green. there's I, not I many like trees that are this color green. They're usually a little darker. I don't know. Right, but but you ever see the college team, Michigan State? No. They're white and green like that. Every time I watch them play, I think, yeah, I don't really like their uniforms. Hmm. Do you puke on your television set? <laughs> no, but psychologically, <laughs> I go. Uh. Okay. Do you say it out loud? Do you make that noise? No. Okay. I'm very good at keeping a straight face while thinking many thoughts. Right. So, Mr. Smith, follow-up question. Here's our follow-up question. It's completely unrelated to the previous question. Mm-hmm. So technically, something we we ask every guest. It's really yeah. We've I didn't, asked. I don't, don't make the rules. We've asked. Okay. Or just, we've asked everyone this yeah, question. Yeah, I, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. So our manager gives us this question. We have to ask everyone. What's your take? On the sovereignty of Israel. What is, what is your stance? Do you support the sovereignty of Israel? You support? <sighs> you know, I'm someone, let me start with this. I have a disdain for the news. Mm. Yeah. I dislike it strongly. And now, naturally, during like the beginning of COVID, we all watch the news, you're home, like what's going on, this is crazy, blah, blah, blah. So let me start with that. Let me follow it up with... I've never, I would say, fully educated myself on Israel, Palestine, and that whole right. whole conflict. thing. Yeah, yeah, same. the whole conflict that's gone back thousands of years. Same. That's pretty much the amount I know about it because I choose not to. Not because I think I hate it or whatever, but I'm always someone who has enough other passions, interests, and things going on that I can't wrap myself up in it. Mm-hmm. So, with a neutral. Yeah, it sounds kind of like that would be a good answer to avoid any questions. <laughs> but I really, I'm gonna put it frank. I really don't care. There you go. Nice. That's our first yeah. blunt answer we've got. Wow. Really? Everyone's stepped Everybody around. Everybody else, has, yeah, just Thank danced you. around the club. Thank you so yeah. much. And yeah. I, I'm not saying that to be like tough or cool. Um, it sounded that yeah. way. <laughs> but <laughs> but now, like, if I looked at, if I had a week to, like, read the history of it and what's gone on and the political stuff, because I feel like that also for countries like the U.S., England, you know, like, major countries that lead the free world, really. <gasps> I feel like it's Your been, buddy Zach is here. We need a guess. We need another. True. Would you mind if we an extra guess? But I feel like it's been used as a political point, and I just politics make my skin crawl. You have to pop out. That makes sense. Soon. I'll come back. Okay. Well, uh, we do this again to everyone. I'll come back. I'll come back. What? Can we have a shout out to the Bieber Chowdhury? Uh, shout out to what? Labib Labib Chowdhury. Our, our, our student very good friend, Labib. We get everyone to shout him out for us. We love Labib. 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 Chowdhury. And what's the last name? Chowdhury? It's spelled C H A U D R Y. Some Bangladeshi. I'm no a idea. good speller. I like spelling. Mm. So, say one more time. Labib. Labib Chowdhury. Spell supercilious. So, shout out Labib Chowdhury. Shout out Labib. There we go. That's wonderful. We got shout a shout out. out. We got a blunt answer on Israel. <coughs> wow. Yeah. We're, ma- we're making progress on and this podcast. I also we're making do a lot of progress. agree with your whole thing about the news because my parents actually were the opposite of what you said about how everyone got on the news. And yeah. Started. When COVID started, my parents were like, this is enough. And stop watching the news. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the Which last is smart. time, the yeah. last thing I've heard of the news that was big was like the capital being stormed. Yeah, yeah. Ja- and that January. Now, that was a like year ago. Jesus. And that, that was a two, that was yeah, over two years ago. Wow, yeah. And that but was trust the last me, thing I've here, heard here's my news. take. Besides on the balloon now. Oh, yeah, that's the only new thing. This balloon. And the massive that. chemical spill. <laughs> in East Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. So here's what I always in say Ohio. only in Ohio. We man. all have enough people in our it life. Is. If something major happens, we'll, know. we'll get a text yeah. or yeah. We'll, we'll hear about it. I don't need to follow the news, but whether it's like here or here. 
I'll figure it out. Well, here's a flaw in that theory. Like, well, if everyone was that way, there would never be a tech set. But I know human nature, and I know psychology. I have a master's degree in psychology. Oh, really? And that will never happen. Because there's people who are addicted to That's drama. True. That's true. And the news now, more than ever, is drama. So I understand what drama you're saying. Lovers. If everyone said what I said, no one would have any idea what exactly. the hell was going on. So, Wait, so, but, tell, so where did you get your yeah, master's? Tell us more about the psychology. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, my, that's my, my mom has a master's in psychology oh, as well. Okay. Yeah. So I started at Montclair State. And then, um, then I finished it online at a university called Capella University. Oh, right, right. You probably, there's like commercial yeah, even, yeah. but it's like a legit university, I think in Minnesota, but uh, it was like when, when online stuff started and it was legit. Um, so I finished it there. I actually started here in 2005 and I got my master's from 2007 to 2009. So I got that while I was teaching here. Uh, but yeah, it was in psychology with a concentration in sports psychology, which is really sense. code word for peak performance yeah. psychology. So, uh, like half, I would say, of the master's was general psychology. The second half was peak performance psychology. Like how to maximize your performance in anything you do. I'll give you like a scenario here. So if I like to get peak performance out of, okay, so let's say this guy, right? You're, uh, do you coach a team? No. Let's say you're a basketball coach or something. This one player, he refuses to... Want to help me out here? I, I have no idea where you're going with this. He, uh, play hard defense. Yeah, he refuses to play hard in defense, and he insists on taking out a nightgown and cap and pillow and blanket and sleep on the basketball court <laughs> while the game is happening. How would you stop that behavior? How would I stop it? Well, first and foremost, I would... It would probably happen in practice first. So I would call him or her in to the locker room, sit and talk, and more ask a lot of questions. Start peeling the onion back. Like, get to where the core of this is coming from and explain certain things that you can't sleep on the court in a cap and all that. And then if... There are certain things, like I'm With big on have a few rules, but don't have a hundred rules. Right. You have a hundred rules, someone's always going to be breaking them, you'll be more stressed out, the players or employees will be crazy. So here's the three rules, I would say. And one of them clearly is you can't do that. So if you insist on doing that, you can't be a part of this yeah. team. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what if you, like, you know he's like Michael Jordan? Like, in disguise, basically. Yeah, I mean, there's been a ton of great players in all <laughs> sports that Michael teams Jordan's get rid of, ultimately, and the team gets better because yeah, that's of, true. of the toxic nature of their personality. But it's, it, he only sleeps when he's on defense. When he's on offense, he scores every point he's in every game. He's an all-star. Yeah. 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 Well, no, it's like, to me, it's just, I guess, because I was very Total good at sports. Type. So, to me... I don't live through sports vicariously. You know, like, there's certain, especially, like, fathers that might live through their kid. Um, So, uh, I just, like, sports are great. But if you're not at the pro level and there's not millions involved of dollars, it's just not worth it. It's more about the experience than trying to win two more games. So, I just... Sport, like fitness, sports teaches you so much, even if you're a spectator. Like, let's say you love the NBA or Major League Baseball or football. It's entertaining, but it also teaches you a lot just by watching it. But when you play it, you realize that. And I'd rather have a better experience for my team than just win a few more games and placate to someone who clearly doesn't care about their teammates. Right. You know, because a team is called a team. So you're like a snoozing, no no snoozing, no exceptions. No, sort of. Yeah. So I have to go do a test because I was out all week. I should be back, but if I don't come back, this was a great 
podcast. Yes, okay, by the no, way. And I'll be in here every... Good riddance. I'll be in here for Mark Beer 3 every Wednesday unless I'm absent. So Please, we could do another one. We could, yes. Want. Please talk to Mr. Deerwater. We'd like to have you both on at the same time. That would I, I, I do think if Deerwater and I were together, because as much as we're very good friends, we do also have very different personalities. Right. Deerwater and I. So what do you So we, we could play that. off each other. Yeah, we need very well. Yeah. yeah I, I, so like I think Deerwater will say that something. Having a little bit of banter is fantastic. Deerwater might say something and then I'll like throw in a quick like little yeah. sarcasm. You know, it, it, that could work well. I feel like you're, you're both I feel like you're both great, but you two just amplify each other. Yes. Yeah, and that's why in the I, comedy department. That's why I think we became pretty good friends or very good friends. Yeah. Because we do. Even like before this we have here seven together. At period seven, there's a million kids, and it's like not chaotic, but there's like a lot going on, and we do kind of play off each other. I remember period seven last year? Yeah, with the two of you guys, that was great. Yeah, I'm, I have. It's kind of like that right now. I haven't gotten both of you guys again yet. Yet. What period do you have, Jim? I have six. Yeah, I'm actually off period six. I've, I got, know, I've gotten I Zachary a, a few times, but. Yeah. I know this year I have Deer Water as my bass teacher. Yeah. And last year I had you in the hockey unit. Yeah. Zachary claims that's not his real name. He said that was his son's name. Deer Water? That's what he said. That's what he told me. Well, his son's name is Zach. So he's little Zach. So his son is little Zach. Yeah. He's a junior. Little junior. Okay. Well, big Zach and little Zach. And little Mike and Kaden. Little Mike and Kaden. Mike. So in Kaden, just Kaden, just Kaden. Just Kaden's Kaden. middle name is my name, Michael. So it's Kaden Michael Smith. Uh, I, I have the same thing. My middle name is my dad's first yeah. name, and his middle name Which is I his like dad's that. first yeah. name. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice tradition. I agree. Yeah, but we, I, I agree with him. We could just, he's just Kaden, no middle or last name. He's like Madonna or Seal. Wow. Yeah, exactly. You know, there is no. He's other just name. like Kaden. Madonna. He's like Rihanna. Yeah. With all, without all the plastic surgery. Exactly. And also, he's not pregnant. Yes. So we know. That we know. Yeah. As, as far as we know. That was very so. impressive that she did a, a whole performance while pregnant. That was crazy. I, 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 that was I did not think that was going to... I, 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 I like never. her music. What's your favorite Rihanna song? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would have to look at a list of like <laughs> 10 or 20. 10 or 20. But, you know, there's certain songs where she just sings the hook. Yeah. And there's other songs where it's her whole song. Yeah. But I will be honest, the song she opened with, I've always loved. And it's her whole song, right. Bitch Better Have My Money. That's true. I enjoy that that's song. That's true, that's true. Would you you know like why I like it? Better. Because it, it emits a level of confidence. Right. right. And it, it, like you could, I'm not focused so much on like someone paying me back but it emits like yeah. a level of like uh, like a little bit of swag but not being too cocky yeah. but not being too passive like that perfect mix of swagger and sass yeah and it's short it's like three minutes it's just quick well I wouldn't say but, three minutes is necessarily short well for like uh, well if you go back older songs tend to be like much longer longer like four or five minutes yeah like now they've like shortened it so, so what's but that, what's there's that, many two, like minutes is like a, the sweet spot. There's a ton of other good Rihanna songs where, like all of the lights me. with Kanye wow. West. Right. I like back. because her hook is so. I'm cool. back. We're so what was the name Rihanna of that song again? And how much he likes All Rihanna. of the lights. Oh, you know the one you're saying. Bitch, better have my money. That's his favorite Rihanna song. Would you like to say any, What's any your other cuss words on the podcast? I did not know Rihanna. No, not really. Just one, just one. Until I watched Doesn't have to be extreme I thought or anything. Rihanna was Ariana no, Grande. Okay. Mis- 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 That's not, I've so, never seen him before. And am I now, if I worked at it organically, I would. Right, right. But so what do you now, call... here's, here's what I say about cursing. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> curses, even if it's in their own head, That's true. of course. That's true. That's true. Now, when used properly and timed properly... The right curse word could be very impactful. That's true. Yes. But if you say it all the time, yourself, your own brain, but other people tune it out. Right. If I said F this and F that all the time, you would tune it out. It just, like, becomes a word. It loses its significance. Like, is that a a really bad thing or is that a neutral thing? Like, if people do, like, if you go up to someone, like, how does that... So if if someone curses all the time, I don't dis... 
like them or think they're like not a good Hooligan. person. I don't Ms. know. Galanti. It's just like it seems like low hanging fruit. Yeah. I want a little more depth. Yeah. Because there are better words than F this or F that. But, like, some of the best, speaking of psychology, some of the best motivational speakers in the world, like this guy Tony Robbins, if you Googled him, it would explain everything. But he, as he's gotten older, he's probably 65 now, but as he's gotten older, I've noticed he's cursed more in his talks on YouTube or specials he's made on Netflix or whatever. There's a special called I'm Not Your Guru. And it's Tony Robbins. And he curses more. And he obviously does it for a reason to like make an impact. Yeah. But he never did early. And I found that fascinating. So maybe, maybe it's because he's like old, you know. And he people won't take him as seriously. And he realizes <laughs> though, like, but he uses it at certain moments, you know. Right. Cursing at the right moment, like, if you add me for a unit and I'm kind of chill 98% of the time, one day I stood up and I was like, and let's say people were being crazy. And I was like, well, everyone sit the F down. And I said that for me. People would be like, That's true. they'd probably be like, oh my God, Smith is about to lose his mind. But, you know, there's teachers who might say that every day. Yeah. And after a while, you're like, you know what I mean? Right. Parents do. That's true. Parenting is kind of similar. What really surprised me, do you know Mr. Beast? What's the last name? (laughs) Mr. Beast. He's a YouTuber. Well, I... Oh, no, 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 you're not. Um, What really surprised me, he was on a podcast, I'm not sure what it was. It might have been Joe Rogan. It was ours. Joe yeah, Rogan he, podcast. We should get Joe Rogan on the podcast, actually. How epic would that but be? We should call him. The two podcast teams. Mr. Smith and Joe Rogan? No, I would love that. Joe what are you saying? And Mr. Smith. But and what if Joe Rogan wanna, was in the room right now smoking a fat blunt? Do you want to hear a fun... That would be fun, No, none of that. <laughs> you guys want to hear a fun... doesn't follow the dress code. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's, he's wearing a crop top. Yeah, he's wearing a crop top. He's, he's wearing a tube top. I'm so mad I can't wear You want to hear a fun tie-in? To me and Joe Rogan. No, I've never him? met him. Oh, okay. I was, but I was about to say. One of my favorite fitness peak performance companies is called Onnit. O N N I T. One word, Onnit. They make supplements, fitness equipment, healthy food, all that. And they're based out of Austin, Texas. Three, two years ago, my wife and I went down to Austin, Texas. And that's where Onnit's headquarters is. Oh my God. Huge worldwide company. They're awesome. I have equipment from Onnit at my gym and stuff like that. Long story short, I signed up for a group class. Drove, we rented a car to Onnit in Austin while we stayed there. Took the workout, went to the Onnit headquarters. It'd be like going to the headquarters of something like Crayola like yeah Crayola or Kraft or Nabisco you know like but for in the fitness health and peak performance space and Joe Rogan is one of the investors and owners of Onnit not really? the main owner but like one of the investors so um, I like Joe Rogan but I like Onnit more in general so I was in Austin went there and obviously they have Joe Rogan's picture and stuff and a couple of the people who work there were like oh Joe just left. He was just there, so I just missed him. Wow. Oh, but, like, I'm the kind of person who I'll fly to Texas, California, Italy, if I want to go do something. Like me, Joe Rogan? Yeah, I'm not really, like, a fanboy like that. But if I met him, it'd be awesome. No, like, if he, like, I just like going right to do experience. Like, What's up? Uh, Are you a fan of Ice Spice? Cheeseburger. Who's that? <laughs> Let's see here. Ice Spice. She's a she's a rapper. I don't know who she is. And she. I would um, have to look her up. Don't and listen. Don't. I just by the name, I'm judging, but it sounds terrible. It is. Do you use Old Spice? No. But when I was in college, what do you use? I did. What do you use now? I use. You know how most natural type products suck, don't work well. I guess. Like a natural deodorant, you sweat. Natural lotion, you're dry. Right, right, right. So I, I, I yeah, found... You know. Because deodorant right. has some of the most chemicals in it of anything. Um, <coughs> so anyway, I found this deodorant. So I use a natural deodorant, but it actually, like, I don't sweat. Hmm, right. But it's made with all, like, healthy stuff. 
I see. But Old Spice I did use in high school and college, and it smells fantastic. That's that's great. But see, like body wash is different. I'll use Old Spice body wash because you're just rinsing it right off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like deodorant or lotion, you if you're going to use two personal products, you want to try and get healthier versions of those because they your skin absorbs everything. Did you know your skin was in Oregon, Leo? Yes. Biggest. True. That's true. Biggest One organ. thing that... My I, biggest organ is actually um, my stop. genitals. I, when you paused, I knew where that I knew was where, I knew what you were going to say. I knew you were going to say that. He didn't, have, he didn't even true. have to start talking. And I knew that was going to come out of it. Regardless, wow. of, regardless of what's said, I appreciate the calm demeanor. Yeah. Thank you. He's, he regrets saying it now because yeah. we just... Yeah, we just analyzed I said, I said, like completely. brain or something, or like something ridiculous, yeah. like finger. You know how anyway, it is. You know um, how it is. <laughs> one thing I haven't used in a long time, I used to like was Irish Spring. Irish soap. Spring's a classic. The soap. Yeah, great. the green. This has well, nothing to do with you. You know what they do? They milk Irish people. He's, he's, he is. <laughs> That's Irish. how they make the soap. According to yeah. him, my, I'm a my one Irish, Irish my one Irish friend. According to him, Irish people reproduce asexually, and they okay. um, they burst from the ground like potatoes. Will you stop talking about that? That's what he said. I've witnessed many <laughs> potato births. <laughs> Where they just pop out into a big yeah, exactly. potato. Wow. And then you have to, like, you know, like, you have, like... It's truly have, like, American, skin really. Uh-huh. This is what they have to do. It's like a shell. Reproduction. And then you have to, like, skin the potato to get the people out. Yeah. So who do you think would win in a fight oh. to the death? Mr. Jennings Ooh. or you? Ooh. If you had to fight him. That's like, a good question. Be blunt. Be blunt. Obviously. It's a good question. Be blunt as you're known for being. Mr. Smith. As it's Joe Rogan is known yeah, for just, smoking. Thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be you. Well, I will say, Mr. Jennings does keep himself in very good shape. That is very true. He's, he's very good. fast. Yes. He's, he's you think he could do like a fast. wall jump? And, and Mr. Jennings is also tall. So means he has a good reach. You ever watch MMA or boxing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The longer my, your, your arms, like, the more advantage you have. My dad had um, a dream a fight just to like the this. Death. What? what? I mean, I would, I would pick myself, but he would... Unbiasedly. Yeah, I, unbiased, I'd pick myself. If, especially if there was time to train. You know, like a pre-camp train. <laughs> a prep but, time. But I will say, <laughs> Mr. Jen- Mr. Jennings is legit. And I, and I don't, you know, a lot of times in a fight, it's not just your physical, it's your mental. Yes, That's very true. And Mr. Jennings... People overlook that. Mr. Yes. Mr. Jennings is a very strong mental person. Here's a scenario to build off that. You, okay, it's, it's, it's only the two of you in the school. You can't leave until one of you is, is dead. The entire oh. school, though. And the entire school, so you can hide, you can wait okay. it out. Who do you think would win in that situation? That's a horror. You can even, like, for that example... That sounds like the premise of a great documentary. That's for example, question. like, if you were... Yeah, it's like the Hunger Games. It's a social experiment. Room. We should do that. Yeah, if you were in the, we team. should lock you yeah. in the, like you the, the weight room, you could, like, experiment. grab a weight and, like, chuck it at him. Like, you, so, you, can, you can wait him out. You can hide in the ceiling. No, anything is... You could both grab a gun on the sixth floor. so big, that could last, like, a week or Exactly. Oh, right. According to Mr. Atkins, that's hard to answer. There'd be many altercations in the lunchroom. Yeah. Because food, you know? Yeah. Mr. Smith. Anyway. According to Mr. Acton, there is no sixth floor. See ya. He said there was a seventh floor, no sixth floor. Is that that true? true? As far as I know, he's correct. That's awesome. There there was, I believe, a swimming pool on the sixth floor. I thought that was the... I was told the third floor pool at the middle school. There is no sixth floor. Third floor (laughs) Well, there used to be. There is never been a two, no. two thirds of this building are, was built in 2007. Yes, so we're very I good. know much about this. I researched well, this building. Dude, we, we, we have to, we have to go. Well, I have we have to, to get on yeah. the bus. That's oh, the time. We can reconvene. I'll yeah. be Smith. in here most Wednesdays. Part it's been a pleasure. Soon. It's been a pleasure two, having you. Boogaloo. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. Yes. 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 This, this, so sorry we had to cut it when, off short. When you finish it, shoot me the link. We will, we will. But I'll see you. Shoot you many things. All right. This has been two Tubas and a Canadian. Goodbye. Yes. Tuba One signing off. Tuba One signing off.